Hello. <laughs> it's me. She does that. Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel in the East Coast Keto Test Kitchen. I'm Bobby. I'm Jeff. And together we yeah, are East, East Coast, Coast Keto. Keto. So today we have a monster recipe for you. Um, we're going to do... It's, it's one of the most popular on yep. our website. It's one of our most popular okay. for us. I know we that. We're going to do game day chili for you guys. And um, as you can see in front of us, we got a ton of ingredients here. Lots of fresh produce, lots of meat, some uh, canned tomatoes and stuff. So do we, do we want to do a quick run through on what sure. we have? Yeah. All right, let's do it. All right, so um, starting with the... You, you know what, starting off with some onions, some garlic, lots of meat. meat. We, we have uh, pork tenderloin. Yeah, which we we'll have, chop up. Yeah, chunk off. We have some uh, ground, ground beef. beef. We have some stewing beef. We have some ground turkey, and you, you know, you can custom you, you can customize this. If you'd rather have ground pork instead of the ground beef, or if you don't want to admit, you know, that's that's totally fine. You can you can you can take this recipe and make it suit your own taste. Yep. We have lots of peppers. We have some bell peppers, some jalapeno peppers, and these are a favorite of yours. Oh, yeah. Dried ancho chilies. Um, they they oh. uh, nacho chilies. <laughs> Not nacho, nacho chilies. A N C H O. Right. Uh, most grocery stores carry them in the produce section. You'll normally find them in a in a cello bag, like in a in a little basket or something. Yeah. Usually up on, um, on like on the, the the edge of the, the shelf top, yeah. or yeah. And if you can't find them, ask someone in the produce section. Um, but this is just the one that we love to use. It ups 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 the heat slightly, but. It really boosts the the depth of the flavor, it does. and it actually darkens the color too. It does. Well, look, at, look at the color of it. Yeah. So. So we'll have a couple of these in there. Um, we also have some hot sauce. Um, we have beans. lots of spices. We have some garlic, some onions, some mushrooms, some tomatoes. One of the first curiosities that we have that we put right. in our chili that makes people go, huh, is the corn beef. Corn beef. Now. Make sure you check in the label because they're not all the same. This one, the ingredients are beef, salt, and sodium nitrate. There so, you go. So it's it's a perfectly clean source of protein, and it beware ups, beware of starches though. Yeah, because a lot of them have starches as a binder to hold it together. Exactly. So it adds it adds to the texture, mm -hmm. but it also gives it another variation of of meat. Yep. Um, we have some chicken broth here, but we pretty much just use that to help deglaze the pan. We have a can of tomatoes. Now we prefer San Marzano tomatoes just because they have a richer, deeper flavor. Yep. And um, we have some tomato sauce. This is another one that really throws people off. Right. We put some sliced olives in there. Now I know, I know, you don't I like don't, olives. Or or, or my youngsters, or hubby won't eat them, or whatever. Picky. But you know what? This so one, am I. this one here. <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, anyway, um, when I first came up with this idea to put the olives, he, I mean, he thought I was gonna ruin the chili. Chili has always been one of our favorite meals mm -hmm. to cook together, and he was like, "No, that's it. I'm not eating it." But what he didn't know at the time is that once you put them into the chili recipe, you can't taste the olives at all. The taste disappears. Sort of like a tofu, it takes on the flavor profile of whatever you're cooking, so no olive taste, nope. but what it does is it replaces that bean that texture. That feel. Exactly, we're used to having chili and having the, the kidney beans and, and whatnot in it, which we can't have anymore, but this will replace that mm -hmm. for you. So give it a try. And if it's trust us, trust us yeah, exactly. If if it's something that you don't like, you can either pick them out, you know, certainly omit it next time around, but try it. You will be pleasantly surprised. We also have some coconut sauce. Mm -hmm. Now this is a soy sauce substitute. Uh, soy is not only inflammatory, but in the keto world, it's a no go. Um, soy is a hormone interrupter, particularly it's difficult nice. for women especially those who've gone through any breast cancer or anything like that. So uh, in the States, if you're, if you're anywhere near stateside, this is going to be called coconut aminos. But here um, where we are, it's a coconut sauce. 
And last but not least is we usually put in some sweetener. Um, we used to use a brown sugar. We used to use a brown sugar. We do have a brown sugar substitute, so maybe we'll put some of that in there. But for today's purposes, any keto-friendly uh, sweetener is going to do it. Make sure it's uh, confectioners, not granular, because um, you don't want that have that gritty taste mm -hmm. in your dish. Now, if you don't have confectioners swerve, which... The, the regular, I think, is an orange. It's orange on the bottom. Uh, or erythritol or stevia or whatever. Stick it in a, a magic bullet or a blender. Whiz it up. Whiz it up into a fine powder and yeah, you get confectioners. And a good point, something that we've never talked about before, but one of our group members uh, pointed out is make sure when you whiz it up, you let it settle for a little while. Because if not, you are going to be breathing in a cloud of oh, yeah. poof. It just explodes when you... Mm -hmm. So these are all our ingredients. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go off camera, we're gonna get everything all do prepped, all prep. yeah. do our mise en place, which is everything in its place. And uh, cause I'm sure you guys don't wanna stay there and watch us chopping up onions and Pe peppers and, and peppers and limes and tuckers and peppers. Yeah, we'll, we'll get this meat chopped up and the stewing beef, probably cut that up a little smaller than it is and get everything ready to go. Join us in. All right, we'll see you in a bit. All right, so we got our jalapenos uh, basically sliced in half and uh, the, most of the ribs and seeds taken out. Which is the spicy part. A yeah. lot of people don't realize that it's the inside that's, that's the spiciest. So if you want extra spice, leave all those seeds in there. And if you don't want the extra um, heat. heat, take them off. So we're doing good on our prep here. We've got little bowls of meat and peppers and and all kinds of things ready to go and we're just going to continue to and then we got these guys so how do they the ancho they're they're dried so you're going to get most of the heat from these they're they're actually not quite as spicy as the jalapenos but yeah you want a, a good sharp knife and, and could you soak those? You can, but they're going to be soaking in the in the pot. Okay. So it's all good. Perfect. But yeah, you can. We'll probably skip a lot of these seeds. So we'll discard those. Yes, please. And because there's heat, and then there's oh my god, I can't eat it. Right. <laughs> right. We'll continue on prepping. There we go. We've got all of our prep done and we're ready to go. And as you can see, we've got all kinds of ingredients here and mm -hmm. they're all gonna come together into one glorious pot of chili. Sticky. Are you ready to get started? Come on, we go. Come on, we go. And welcome back. So here we are. Make some chili. Hopefully one of us wants to make chili. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, where do you begin? Now, you know, there's some kitchens out there where they would just take everything and dump it in the pot, but you know what, that's not really the way to go, because what you want to do is you want to build flavor as you go. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to start off with some fat, with some onions, and then we're going to start going in with the meat. Now, because we have so much meat here, it's important not to overcrowd your pan. Yeah. Because in the cooking world, brown means flavor, yeah. and if you have too much in your pot, you're not going to get that flavor. You're not going to get the brown. Exactly. So you need to give your food some Pace space. Yourself. Pace yourself. Exactly. So we're going to do it a step at a time. So let's turn on our stove. Now, for you Ketonians <laughs> out there, this should be something that's right by your stove. So keep it you handy. should have bacon fat you know we talk about mct but this is free healthy fats now keep in mind that what i'm doing here i'm doing several batches so mm, sound good. <laughs> we're we're doing a multiple batch here so as we go i will give you the amounts of what i'm putting in there um, when it comes to the meats and stuff like that you know, you can, you can add, you can subtract, you can make it your own. So the first thing that we put in there is the two tablespoons of bacon fat, and we are gonna let that melt right and on top. In, in our case, we're doing a quad batch, so it's Exactly, but I, I'm gonna give the, the amounts for yep. a single recipe. Yep. 
So the first thing we're going to add in here is what would be a medium onion for you guys. And we're going to add that right on into the pot. There you go, Mr. Pike. And we're going to let that cook down. So um, thank you for being by my chef. <laughs> we had a discussion on the our lives about that. This we morning. did. So why don't we come back when the onion is starting to uh, brown up a little more and uh, we'll take it to the next step. Okay, so our onions are starting to turn translucent, meaning they're, you know, roughly around, I'd say a third cooked. And at this stage of the game, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the meat and I'm going to push it back to the sides of the pan. And I am going to put in our beef. Now, this is our stewing beef and we have it cut into, um, I would call it a rough chop. And the reason we like to do that is, personally, I like a more rustic chili. I don't like to have everything oh so perfect, but that's just my style. So we're going to let that cook up now and brown up. And we're going to be doing our meat in different stages. And um, So the onions are going to come out with... We're going to brown up this beef here now, and we are going to uh, take out our the contents of the pot. We're going to deglaze the pan, and then we're going to rinse it more now. This is one of the things that I ordinarily do. Um, we like a, a chili that's really, really heavy in chili powder and chili flavors. So right from the very get-go, I'm going to take some of the chili powder that's in my recipe. And I'm going to add it right into the meat, and right from the very start, I'm going to let those chili flavors start to settle right in there. And boom, right away, the kitchen is smelling amazing. So we'll let that cook, and we'll be back in a moment. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, so you need to season it every step of the way. So I'm going to put some salt in there. And come on, you got to season like a chef. It's no good just putting a little tiny bit in there. And remember, our pink Himalayan salts are good for us. Yep. And some pepper. I'm going to turn off the heat on that for now. And we're going to take that and we're going to transfer that out. Let me give that one more stir. Yes, yes stir, sir. And then I'm going to get... Perfect. I'm going to get my Bobby Chef and he is going to go in and... So, for the recipe that we're looking at on the website, we have a half a pound of regular ground beef, we have a pound of ground pork. Um, the next step we're going to go into, we're going to go into the six strips of bacon that are chopped. So, we already have those chopped and ready to go. Um, and instead of the ground pork, we're going to use ground turkey today. So, again, we have a little bit more meat here. We've opted not to go with the ground pork because we've got the pork tenderloin. We have a little bit more meat here today, but that's because we're doing a multiple batch, so. All right. Alrighty, so we'll tuck that meat aside and go back on with our heat. And the next thing we're gonna go in, so this would be your six slices of chopped bacon. In our case, it's a full pan. There you are, sir. And we also have some ground turkey going in there. Let me get rid of that. We'll give it a little wash. Clean as we go. Thank you. Yeah, we clean as we go. Luckily, we're both clean and tidy in the kitchen. Perfect. Now, before we get uh, into that, I'm going to put a little tiny bit of uh, chicken broth in there, and that's going to help to deglaze our pan. There we go. And get all those good flavors off the bottom of the pan. Perfect. And we'll probably do that a couple of times as we go through our recipe. So I'm going to spread all that out there now, and uh, we'll let that cook, and we'll be back in a second. We are continuing to cook our meat. Now again, we've got a lot more meat here on site today than you would ordinarily because we are cooking a quadruple batch. But as the meat is cooking, I'm using my spoon to, to chop it up into uh, little, little pieces. And we are flavoring as we go. So with every batch of meat that I put on, I'm putting some chili powder in there and I'm also putting some salt and pepper. And I'm also deglazing using that chicken broth to get all the good tasty stuff off the bottom of the pan between each batch of meat. 
So we'll continue to let this brown, then we'll come back and we'll start adding all the veggies and the spices, and that's when the magic is gonna happen. All our meat is cooked, and if you look in the bottom of the pan, you can see there's lots of brown stuff down there. That's where all your flavor is, and a lot of people will make the mistake of taking their pan and washing it out because that all that brownie, burny stuff on the bottom, but here's a trick for you. And this is not in the recipe online. I'll usually add in some apple cider vinegar. Here we go. Woo! And you can see what happens is that apple cider vinegar is going to go and take all those yummy brownie bits and take them off the bottom of the pan and make the pan all ready to make sure you're not losing any of that yummy flavor. Alrighty, so we're going to turn our heat back on again now. Here we go. I'm going to add in just a little tiny bit of extra fat because, well, you know what us keto crowd are like. There we go. So the next thing we're going to add in is our peppers. And I have, um, for the purposes of our recipe today, we have 10 ounces of peppers. And we are going to put those in that little guy. It didn't want to go in the pan, so what could you do? So we have 10 ounces of peppers in there. We're going to let those cook up. And on the very end of it, we're going to come back. We're going to push the peppers to the side. We're going to put our garlic in the middle and let two of those marry together and get the flavors into each other. But for now, we're going to give that a few minutes and let those peppers soften up and let them start to cook. Oh, I wish you could smell what's going on here, I swear to God. Okay, let's have a look at what's going on in here. The green peppers are starting to get soft, so at this stage of the game, we're going to push everything back to the sides of the pan. Anytime you're adding any spices or any flavorings, you really want to add it right into the oil on the bottom of the pan. So push everything back to the side and let your ingredients go right into the bottom of the pan. So the next thing we're going to add now is our garlic, which, I mean, come on, you got to have garlic now, don't you? So we have, for the purposes of the recipe today, we have four cloves of garlic. We're going to put that right on in there. I need a little small spatula. Excuse me. <laughs> all right, and we're going to put all of that garlic right into the bottom of our pan. Oh, my God. Now you're in charge with jalapenos there, Skipper. I need a little tiny bit more oil. I know my, my hubby is taking away my oil, so I'm going to put another little tiny bit of that in there. There you go. That's better. And Mr. Pike wants us to add in our jalapenos. How many jalapenos do we have for our rice cream? Uh, one? One. One, okay, one so, or two. Depends on your taste. So that's going to go right into the pot as well, our jalapenos. And we are going to let that cook right on that heat. Oh, smell. <laughs> oh, it smells so good. So we're starting to get into the flavor now. We'll let the garlic and the jalapenos, in our house we call them jalapenos. So we're going to let the jalapenos cook. And we'll be back. You gotta have mushrooms and chili. I don't care who you are. Okay, now I know my son Alex is gonna pick every one of them out, even though he's living in Calgary. But if he was here, we we chop them up real small. We could. Here's the here's a hint. When I used to make chili when he was younger, I'd take half of the mushrooms and I would put them through the blender and make it into a paste and put it into whatever I was cooking. Shh. And then I would put it put in some big pieces. So he'd take out the pieces, not realizing he was getting all the flavor from the chill, the, the mushrooms that were in there. Okay, so we'll get you to come on in close. We're gonna push the peppers back to the side. Oh yeah, and we are going to add our mushrooms in. Voila. And we are going to let those puppies cook in there. And um, soon gonna be time to Place it all up. Because that's the way we roll. That's the way we roll. Alrighty, Chef Jeff, what's going on? Um, the oils are starting to get consumed by the, the peppers that are in there and the garlic. So I'm going to add a little bit of broth. Woohoo! 
He blazed that thing. Oh, the colors coming out. It's absolutely incredible. Alrighty, so we're going to leave the, the uh, what's in the pot uh, nice and wet now, and we're going to start adding in our spices. So um, we'll be back and we'll start adding those in. Yeah. Are you ready to spice things up? Come on over and we'll have a look and see what's happening in the pot. Alrighty, so we've got our mushrooms, we've got our jalapenos, or as you know, jalapenos. We have, exactly, <laughs> mushrooms, and we're going to push all that back to the sides of the pan as much as we can. It's going to be impossible to get it all back. But what we want to do is we want to expose the underbelly of the pot so we can put those spices right in there. So the first thing we're going to add in is going to be four tablespoons of chili powder. Now we have been adding chili powder for our, own, for our own taste every step of the way to the meat to make sure everything is spiced really well. We have two tablespoons of cumin. And if you know anything about cumin, it loves to hang out with coriander. So we have coriander here and cozied up right alongside of it are some red pepper flakes. There's one tablespoon of red pepper flakes. Now that's something you can adjust to your own taste. Yeah, a lot of people may not like all that, all that hot and spicy. We have a teaspoon of thyme going in there. Ain't no one got thyme for thyme. And last but not least, we have a teaspoon of smoked paprika. Now you can use the regular paprika, but we find the smoked again adds a little extra uh, bit of flavor. And the last thing I'm going to add is some shake, 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 shake. Is our coconut sauce and pre keto, this would have been your um, soy slash Worcester. Exactly. So, again, I'm putting in a little bit more than you ordinarily would because our batch is bigger. You are going to put two tablespoons of that soy sauce replacement. So, instead of incorporating that all into the spices, what I'm going to do is I am going to try to get some of those juices going into the middle of the pan. There we go. Now you can start to see it happening. So kind of making a paste. I'm kind of making a paste right in the middle of the pan. I'm just taking my pan and I'm tipping it back and forth to make that nice and moist. And you can see how those spices are interacting with the oils and they're starting to bloom. Bloom, exactly. So um, we're going to let that go um, for another minute or so under the heat. Then we're going to incorporate that into the onions and, sorry, not onions, the mushrooms and peppers. Then we start to add in the salsas. All right. So our peppers and mushrooms are all cooked. And now we're going to put the final touches on. So we have a can of corned beef here. Mm -hmm. Now I've got it cut up into um, chunks, but really you don't even need to do that because that totally dissolves in the pot. Okay. So I'm going to put that in there. I have um, a can of tomato sauce that I'm going to put in. There we go. And a can of tomatoes. Now what I do personally is I will take them out individually and chop them into, ooh, there we go, bite-sized pieces that, you know, it's up to yourself. You can take it, if you don't want to have those pieces of tomato, you can blend it right on in. It's going to cook up anyway. It is going to cook up, yeah. This just helps along the process. Do you want to uh, go over my shoulder, Jeff, and put in the salt and pepper? All right. So we have been seasoning our uh, meat as we go, but uh, we also want to put some on the... Uh, don't get me as I come across now. There we go. So I'm just going to continue to cut these guys off. Thank you, sir. And we also uh, need sweetener. Now, with the when we were on, on the beginning, we had um, swerve, but we've decided to switch over and have the uh, Lecanto. Le 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 it's a brown sugar alternative, just because it's closer to what we used to have. I think we're at the bottom of what's in here. And yeah, it smells just it like It smells brown like brown sugar. sugar. So what's, what's in there, Jeff? Um, Let me go wash my hands. Okay, ingredients. 
erythritol and monk fruit extract. So it's perfectly keto friendly. It is. Yep, so How much you, you want to put in? More to man. Put it in there. So in the recipe, yeah, perfect. That's good. It yeah. calls for a tablespoon of erythritol. Uh, we're, we've got a quadruple batch. That's probably uh, a quarter cup. I just want to get out the rest of those tomatoes that are in there. As grandmother would have said, waste not, want not. Get it, all. get it all in there. You get your salt and pepper in there. And the last thing we're going to put in are the olives. So I'm just going to throw those in there. That is one can of black olives. Now you can use green olives, but just make sure they're not the pickled ones. Uh, they are uh, in water. Mm -hmm. Want one? No, I don't like olives. <laughs> but as we've told people before, when they go in there, they take on the flavor profile of the chili. Exactly. And you don't taste all of them. So we got salt and pepper in. Did you put in the no, hot sauce? I did not. Get in there. Right. Now I gotta watch this fellow when he when he does this because uh, he likes it spicier than I do. You can put in three or four dashes. We like to have it a little bit spicier, so we're so, gonna put in a little bit more than that. So actually so, take the cover off and pour it. Exactly. Of so we're gonna let that cook down now. At this stage of the game, it's just a patience and, and waiting for it, it all to yeah. cook together and marry together. And we'll be back when we're ready to do a taste test. Well, uh, the meat has got to go back in. And we're going to put the meat back in. Yeah. You rest assured I'm going to put that meat back in covered. there. I got it covered. All right. We've got the meats put back in now. Luckily, Jeff didn't let me forget. Saucy. <laughs> Saucy. And for our own tastes, we uh, upped the flavor profile a little bit and added some extra uh, spices just because we like it a little more spicy. Now, I'm in my CVs now. I haven't got the, the gear on. But um, we're just going to let this cook away and... Simmer for a while. Simmer for a little while. But boy, I tell you what, you know, I, 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 can, I can just gobble this up right now. I'm going to burn myself again. Mm -mm. Oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna let it go, and we'll be back when it's when it's ready to serve up a bowl. No, what are you stirring it with? Oh, yes, I forgot to tell you. This is our second spoon because when when before we put in the extra sauce, everything was so thick that we literally broke our last slotted spoon. So we had to dig out a brand new slotted spoon, and uh, hopefully we won't break this one. But yeah, you can see the height of where that's up to on a great big pot. That's well, well this is this is probably around a five times batch of what we what we do on the on the on the recipe that's on the website. So uh, this is gonna do us enough meals for probably 10, 12, possibly more. Probably more. Yeah. Stay tuned. Alright. We're done. Are we done? We're done. It's finished. It's finished. Mm-hmm. All right, so we have some sour cream, which you need to check and make sure it's clean. Yep. We use the Gailey Gold. Gold. We have some cheddar it, it cheese. It doesn't, because the regular sour cream has starches. starches. Oh, of course you want some too. <laughs> <laughs> the struggle is real. <laughs> we have some cheddar cheese and we have some uh, green onions. So how would you like to dress yours, young man? Hello, will, babies. I will put some cheese on top. Oh, shut up, cat. Hello. And a little bit of green onion. No sour cream for you? And some sour cream. Because you ordinarily go right through some eyes into the sour cream. and I like some spicy. I would have figured you'd be more saucy. I like the saucy too. That's why I like you. Mm hmm. I want a little bit more cheese. Mm hmm. Now, this ended up making a little bit of a big pot. This is literally up to here. <laughs> so I'm good. We're, we're good for a while. Are you ready to taste? Yeah. Can't wait. All right. Come on, we yours. Mm -hmm. Don't burn your mouth. Yeah. A little bit of cheese. 
change the limit of our variable. I think I need another try before I can mm -hmm. properly evaluate. No, oh, I can evaluate. It's pretty practical. Mm. It's amazing. So there you have it. Another successful successful batch of East Coast Keto Kuchen. game day chili. And yeah, we have enough. We're going to put it aside and we have enough to last us, I'd say, till next fall. <laughs> It'll get us through to, to the summer anyway. Totally. So that's it for today. You talk because I'm eating. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that mm -hmm. every time we put up a new video, you'll get notified. And get Coke and Keto food. Just eat real food. And East Coast Keto. And Game day chili. Yeah. yeah. You'll like it. Bye. See you, folks.